I've analyzed over 200 writing samples from new and amateur writers in our programs, and I'm going to share with you the six things you've got to have in your scenes to make sure they're actually working. First one is you have to have an inciting incident. The inciting incident is the ball of chaos that comes into your protagonist's life and knocks their life off balance. So they're going in one direction, assuming they know what's going to happen next, and an inciting incident hits them and knocks their life out of whack. Now this could be a good thing, like a job offer or a love interest, or it could be a bad thing, like a nuclear threat or a cancer diagnosis. But no matter what it is, it has to be something that pops into their life and knocks their life off balance. Now I've got several annotated scenes down in the description of this video that you can look at and identify with me. But in this particular video, we're going to go through two different scenes. One from The Princess Bride by William Goldman and one from The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. In the example scene for The Princess Bride, the inciting incident is when the man in black finds Vicini with the princess gagged, blindfolded, and a knife to her neck. And this is what knocks his life off balance. He is trying to find the princess, hoping he can find her safe and sound, and he finds her in the clutches of the villain. So this knocks his life off balance, and he's got to deal with it. In The Body in the Library, it's when the wife elbows her husband and tells him to wake up. She wants him to go downstairs and check the library to see if there's actually a dead body in there, and he doesn't want to do that, and she elbows him to wake him up. That's the inciting incident. He was sleeping, and now his life is knocked off balance by his wife elbowing him and telling him to get up and go downstairs. Okay, you're writing your scene. You've knocked your protagonist's life out of balance. What's the next thing? Well, number two is you have to have a clear object of desire for your protagonist. And that object of desire comes from the inciting incident. And we're going to play a little Mad Libs here. So we're going to fill in the blank. Your object of desire is I want blank without having to blank. The object of desire for your protagonist has to be something concrete and clear that they want. And they want that thing without having to do something else or giving up something else. So we're going to fill this in for our two scenes. For the Princess Bride, it's I want to save the princess without having to engage with Vizzini. For the body in the library, it's I want to stay in bed without having to anger my wife. So out of the inciting incident comes this clear, concrete object of desire. It's something that your protagonist wants and they're going to be pursuing throughout the rest of your scene. So those are the first two things. Let's look at number three, the progressive complication turning point, the turning point of your scene. As your protagonist pursues their objects of desire, something keeps getting in the way. And every time they try something, something gets in the way and they can't get their object of desire because fundamentally they want their cake and they want to eat it too. They want to get their object of desire without having to do something else. And these things keep getting stretched throughout each of the progressive complications in your scene. Now, I highlight the progressive complications in the annotations, but I want to focus now on the turning point. So in The Princess Bride, the turning point is when it becomes clear to the man in black that him and Vicini have reached an impasse. And at this point, he's realizing he's not just going to talk Vicini out of it. He's not going to be able to just threaten him and have Vicini give him the princess. He's actually going to have to engage with the princess. So this is the point where he realizes He's not going to get what he wants, which is to get the princess without having to engage with Vicini. In the body in the library, it is the moment when his wife jumps out of bed and throws open the curtains and tells him he's got to get up and go downstairs. And this is the point where the protagonist realizes he's not going to be able to stay in bed and keep his wife from getting angry. So he decides to get up. The turning point of the scene is when our protagonist realizes they're not going to get what they want without having to give up something else. And that is what creates the fourth piece in our puzzle, which is the crisis. This is a clear A and B choice that the protagonist reaches where they have to choose between what they want and giving up something else. The crisis of the Princess Bride scene is he wants to get the princess without having to engage with Vicini. That's not going to happen because of the turning point. So now he has to choose. Is he going to engage with Vicini or not get the princess back? In The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie, we're looking at the fact 
that the husband is now facing, am I going to stay in bed or am I going to have to get out of bed to keep my wife from getting angry? So the crisis is the decision that your protagonist is forced to make, which leads us to the fifth thing your scene has to have. It has to have a climax. And this is where your protagonist actually makes a choice. So they are presented with this crisis, A or B, what are they going to choose? And then your protagonist has to make a choice. So in the Princess Bride scene, he decides to engage with Vicini and he offers up a challenge. And in the body in the library scene, the husband throws off the blankets and gets out of bed and goes downstairs. So this is where we see at that climatic moment in your scene, we see the protagonist make a choice and act on that choice, which then leads to the sixth and final thing your scene absolutely has to have in order to work, and that is a resolution. The resolution is what happens as a result of the choice that your protagonist makes. So what happens in the context, the arena, the world around them? What do the other characters do as a result of the decision that your protagonist makes? So in The Princess Bride, Vicini agrees to the challenge and we move on to the challenge. And in The Body in the Library, the husband goes downstairs and realizes there actually is a dead body in the library. These six things I've seen through looking at hundreds of scenes from our students are the things that move your scene from not working to working. If you just have these six things, you have a scene that is workable. Now, is it perfect? Probably not. We've got some things to fix besides that, but this moves your scene from being unworking to working. Now, once you've got this working, there's other things we've got to look at. We've got to look at info dumping, valence language, making sure your object of desire resolves correctly, and several other things which is what I continue to teach on this channel. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you get notified every single time we come out with a new video. And if you're wondering who I am, I am Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid, and I am the author of The Threshing, Running Down a Dream, and Your First 1,000 Copies. My partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and everything that we teach in this video and on the channel and at StoryGrid.com is based on his 30 years experience writing and editing. If you want to learn more about StoryGrid and how it can help you, we've got lots of free resources at StoryGrid.com. Go there, sign up for the email newsletter. That's where we send out all the latest, greatest stuff from StoryGrid. But as always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.